I'm just trying to figure out how y'all made this connection. Connection. I'm gonna say this in the nicest way possible. It, and I know you watching this. I know you watching this. I know you watching. I know you watching. I know. If I find out, if I find out that you had something to do with this information that these people are claiming to have and all these connections that they think they have. You and I gonna talk. We come in the name of Dolph. Memphis police is afraid. This is why Raven Winton says that she doesn't know how we obtain the information. I really hope that this shit did not happen the way that I think it happened, but my instincts, like everything in, in, the, in the pit of my stomach is telling me that somebody we know Somebody we know leak this shit. Somebody we know leak this shit. Somebody we know leak this shit. Somebody we know. Somebody we know leak this shit. Pay attention because she is confirming that we do indeed have some type of information. Yes, we do. That information is evidence that Tamaki Heard and Ronnie Shidori is directly tied as the centerpiece between politicians, the gangs, and Macadam's cookies. They are connected to elected officials, politicians, including direct ties to Big Villa, Kato 2X, and others that we have named in the alleged conspiracy. Yeah, we got cell numbers. We got officers going on. We got attorneys. We got the mayor. We got police. We got everybody. Yeah, we got cell numbers. We got officers going on. We got attorneys. We got the mayor and them, we got police. Man, we got everybody. Yeah, we got cell numbers. We only got officers going on. We got attorneys. We got the mayor and them, we got police. Man, we got everybody. Yeah, we got cell numbers. We only got officers going on. We got attorneys. We got the mayor and them, we got police. We have exposed the evidence that proved that rapper Young Dolph was assassinated by the Memphis Police Department under the direction of Mayor Jim Strickland and the elected officials of the city of Memphis for financial and political gain, including the use of his death to change Tennessee gun laws. The theme of the assassination was to use the narrative of a successful black man beating guns down in his old neighborhood while proudly supporting a black-owned business that he proudly supported. That black-owned business is McKay's homemade butter cookies. The conspiracy was designed to make the black-owned business a victim. The payoff for their roles in the assassination was to give them constant news press while painting the black-owned business in a good light, access to funds via GoFundMe and various other programs to constantly fund the Macadus including contracts with Kroger and other distributors of their cookies to ultimately make them the face of black-owned business in Memphis. Rave Winton, the official spokesperson for Macadus Cookies publicly stated that the entire case is a political situation and the case must be solved because of upcoming elections. We gotta solve this case, y'all, because elections is coming up. Because elections is coming up. Because elections is coming up. They gotta, they gotta do everything in their power to get everybody, okay? Everybody. They gotta do everything in their power to get everybody involved. Elections are coming up. Elections are coming up. Elections are coming up. This is a political situation. This is a political situation. This is a political situation. These folks cannot fuck up. Do you understand me? They cannot. They cannot escape the Rico games. We have exposed everyone, even video evidence that proved that MPV was indeed there when Young Dolph was assassinated by revealing the identity of Memphis Police Tact Officer Brian Young, who posed undercover. As a new Macadus employee in the White Ford Fusion, police car that was shot up, registered to Shelby County at the crime scene during the assassination. That vehicle is the real suspect car. The assassination was also based on the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King while making Justin Johnson Aka. Straight Drop is the new James R.A. Paid witnesses from the viral crime scene videos included paid background vocalists to not only talk in the background but to say specific things in the background. One of those scripted lines was the audio of a fake witness asking the woman who was first at the scene to go live at a witness for social media but not a witness for homicide detectives. The background vocalist asked Crawford if a suspect's left in a white Mustang. James R.A. allegedly assassinated MLK and left the scene in a white Mustang. That was in that white, the white John. That was in that white, the white John. That was in that white, the white John.
57 years later, young Dolph is assassinated, yet most people do not hate out that Memphis police and the FBI have both admitted to their roles in the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King. No one is above the law, not even the president. The second most powerful man in our state's government about his future. We start with the Lieutenant Governor's visit to the site of the Nashville Christmas bombing. Lieutenant Governor Randy McNally quietly posted these pictures after he visited the Nashville bombing site Wednesday. The blast, just feet away from a massive AT&T equipment building, took out email, phones, and other communication for state government and 911 facilities. He had these words for AT&T about the outages. It probably would be better not to put all eggs in one basket and to have a number of locations. The lieutenant governor has been in Tennessee's legislature since 1975 and in his current position since 2017 with no plans to go anywhere else soon. But I'd like to continue to run for a couple more times. I, Randy McNally, Speaker of the Senate of the 112th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee, in conjunction with Senator Katrina Robinson, at the request of the paper route team and his beloved Aunt Rita, November 17th will now officially be designated as the Adolph Young Dolph Thornton Jr. Day of Service. Proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee on this 18th day of November 2021. Proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee on this 18th day of November 2021. Proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee on this 18th day of November 2021. I would like to present this to you, Jameer. Grizzlies tickets, a trip to Jamaica, even a Jeep. You paid for it, and a lot more of State Senator Katrina Robinson's purchases, and that's according to a new official indictment. Robinson is accused of stealing more than $600,000 in federal fines, money that was supposed to be used for the nursing school she runs. Local Life Team senior investigator Jenny DiPrizio breaks down what the feds say she did with that taxpayer money. State Senator Katrina Robinson will appear before a federal judge next week. I ask that you just give me your thoughts and your prayers, your prayers more so than anything. Wednesday, State Senator Katrina Robinson made that appeal to her supporters. According to this criminal complaint, Robinson stole and embezzled money from the Healthcare Institute, a nursing school she founded. Last February, Local 24 News was there when federal agents raided the school and her home. From 2015 to 2019, the school received $2.2 million in grants. The feds say she used about a quarter of it for her personal use. They say your tax money paid for a $5,000 wrought iron front door at her home. $33,000 was spent in clothing, shoes, hair, and beauty products. Almost $9,000 was paid to the Memphis Grizzlies for tickets and seats and other events. Five grand for a trip to Jamaica and a Jeep for her daughter. The complaint says you paid thousands of dollars for fees associated with her 2016 wedding. About a year later, the Fed say she used $14,000 of the grant money to pay legal fees for her divorce. Your tax money was also used to buy this house on Boeingshire for $46,000 and almost another $10,000 to renovate it. Robinson's day spa appears to be closed, but according to the feds, you paid for the construction, remodeling, rent, and utilities. The feds say Robinson also used the grant money to give herself a $25,000 bonus and put $54,000 in an individual retirement account. Grant money was also used to buy supplies for her kids' snow cone business, and almost $2,300 was spent to hold a state senate campaign event. For the first time since the Civil War, the Tennessee State Senate has ousted one of its members. Senator Katrina Robinson was voted out after being convicted of wire fraud, but she didn't go down without a fight. We had a former colleague from Davidson County sit here with a $6 million Medicare fraud case and allowed to resolve that civilly and finish his term until he was removed by the people. We have a senator sitting here from Hohenwald with an extramarital affair writing opioid prescriptions for their mistress who happened to be their cousin. We have a senator who sat on the ethics committee and just got up and gave this long speech 
about what morality is and what is dignified for a senator, but just came off of a campaign misuse complaint. We have a senator here from Shelby County who is currently under indictment and frankly is in the same posture that I'm in. Of course, that other senator from Shelby County is Brian Kelsey, who's awaiting trial in a campaign finance case. But today was not about Senator Kelsey. It was about Senator Robinson, who was in tears and called the Senate vote a, quote, procedural lynching just minutes before her colleagues voted her out. I continue to push through this ordeal to get here every week for session, for a committee, to give back to my community, even when I couldn't raise money because people thought I was a thief. I went in my own pocket. to give to kids who were looking forward to events that normally I would have a support for. I've stood out front this whole time and I haven't shied away from any fight and I, I, I can't do it here. Some of you may think that I would maintain my dignity through resignation, but for me, the only way to maintain my dignity is to stand here and stand up for myself. Now, earlier this week, federal prosecutors appealed Robinson's conviction. They are challenging a ruling that throughout some of the counts she was convicted of. Robinson is still scheduled for a sentencing hearing on two counts of wire fraud early next month. Like when I die. All this jewelry, these cars, this money is going to be passed around and switch swapped through hands and everybody, all my folks and whatever they do with it. But uh, when I die, like my kids ask who is their daddy, I'm still going to be their daddy. The only thing that I can literally say is mine when I leave. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I take that dead serious. I had the most pleasurable time of my life with Adolf Robert Thornton Jr. He was the most brilliant man, intelligent man, unique man, charming man. He was just everything. And I'm so, so blessed to have been able to experience him for nearly a decade. He had such a benevolent spirit, a giving heart, a heart of gold. I said it once and I'll say it again. He had a, a heart of David one after God's own heart. And I'll say that to the day I die, because I mean that from the bottom of my heart. We would go to Houston's or just anywhere, and, and if we were walking and somebody came up like, hey, can I get your leftovers? He would literally go back inside the restaurant and order something altogether new just to give that person something to eat. And I don't think it was Houston's, it was actually Half Shell <laughs> at that time. Um, but I just would be amazed at, like you, you were literally going back in. I thought that was just so, just awesome, you know? And it, it made me love and like him more at that time. Just, I never, I never experienced someone to be that giving. I even witnessed him once, we were out of town, we was out of the country and he was so eager to, to go into the town where everybody was and he wanted to just give. He, he literally, all the money in his pocket, he gave away. Gave away to all of the young boys that came up. And one boy came up and said, I didn't get anything. And he looked around and he looked at his feet and he took the shoes off of his feet. And he gave this young boy the shoes off of his feet and walked until we found some Crocs or somebody selling something just nearby in the town. And it was just that selflessness that spirit that he had that made me literally fall in love with him, that nothing, nothing that could be done or said could ever make me look at him any differently than just having a good heart and being a good spirited man. And so I'm, I'm honored to have experienced him. I'm honored to have been fruitful and multiply with him because I have two blessings. He just did so much and when I look back, 
to just see how short this time we had with him and especially for them how short this time was but how much had been has been done I'm just very thankful I'm just thankful and I'm just like I I'm thankful to God because it's like I absolutely never wanted to see this happen I never wanted to experience this not one time but twice but I'm just I have to just be thankful to God that he just gave Adolf to us I just pray to God that he heals my heart he heals my children's heart and that we can just be able to live strong in the spirit of Dolph long live Dolph we love you Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland Thursday reacting to the tragic death of Memphis rapper Young Dolph. What happened yesterday was obviously a tragic circumstance. But it was a targeted murder. It was a targeted murder. It was a targeted murder. What happened yesterday was a targeted murder. Because it's targeted, what you need is intervention into the two groups that have problems with each other. So the war just continued. Around the same time, Jay Mula was released from jail for the car theft and shooting that got him locked up with C Mode and CEO Bobby. But being a high ranking member in True La Mafia, Double R was dead set on trying to catch him lacking, and not long after, Rumors started to go around that Jay Mula was robbed and had his gun stolen. Kato 2 x from Double R posted a photo on social media of a Draco with the caption underneath that read, Don't never make a song about me. Come get this Drake back in blood. Hashtag stamp that. He also posted a video where he called Jay Mula a ho and said he got beat up and had his strap taken. Jay Mula took to social media and denied the rumors, claiming that he gave away the Draco to one of his little homies because he didn't need it anymore. He also says that he already used the Draco to shoot at Double R, so it doesn't even matter. We don't know which side of the story to believe, but it's clear that the beef was getting more serious as time went on. Then, in May 2020, Double R would catch a lucky break after the main op C mode got arrested and charged with a long list of felonies that might put him behind bars for a while. Word on the street is that Double R almost caught C mode lacking and got him hit two times. But being a stone cold killer, C mode immediately went for retaliation, even though he was still out on bond from the other shooting. C mode would then take to social media and laugh off the assassination attempt while plotting to get payback. But after unsuccessfully shooting his enemies twice, he would be arrested and charged with one count of murder and seven counts of attempted murder. The murder charge was not related to the most recent shooting, but for the murder of BG. New evidence must have surfaced, and the police were finally able to connect him to the hit. The cops also claimed that c -Mode attempted to shoot up the same house twice, trying to get double R. He opened fire on a home in the 5600 block of Myers Road, where five people were inside. No one was hit the first time, so the rapper came back less than a week later and fired at two people standing on the front lawn, which makes seven attempted hits. Police were able to tie this shooting to the death of BG and determine that it was all related to the war between Trula Mafia and Double R. What happened yesterday was a targeted murder. Because it's targeted, what you need is intervention into the two groups that have problems with each other. Strickland said police beefed up security in potential hotspot areas around the city and had a group of violence interrupters talk to the groups involved. These photos released by Memphis police show the people investigators believe are responsible for the death of young Dolph. Police say they obtained surveillance video that shows two men exit a white four-door Mercedes armed with guns. The suspects approach young Dolph and shot him several times. Strickland said crime is something Memphis has struggled with for years now. Uh, crime in Memphis has been a challenge for 50 years. Uh, we were making progress in 2017, 2018, 2019, driving crime down. The pandemic uh, in Memphis and almost every big city has uh, somehow caused an increase in gun violence. But he says he wants Memphians to know the city is doing everything they can. Hiring police officers, we're pushing for CIFR sentences. Our problem, our challenge is state law is weak. 
Well, again, the barriers are back up here outside of Makita's cookie shop tonight as the memorial continues to grow behind me. But if you know anything about who those suspects are who are responsible for this shooting, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-CASH. You are eligible or you could be eligible for a $2,000 reward. Or you could be eligible for a $2,000 reward. But it was a targeted murder. Councilman J.B. Smiley Jr. is the council member behind the two resolutions. He says young Dolph was not only a role model, he was also a beacon of hope for his community and that's why he plans to honor him today at the city council meeting. I'm also told by Smiley that family members of young Dolph will be in attendance and aren't expected and are expected to speak in front of the council. The proposed street sign renamed in his honor will be located at Dunn Avenue and Airways Boulevard that's near the Memphis Depot Industrial Park in the neighborhood where he he grew up just down the street from where he was also killed at Makita's Cookies. Smiley says having the street sign in Young Dolph's community serves as not only a remembrance, but inspiration for someone who was a relatable example of hard work and perseverance. His, his work speaks for itself. People <laughs> listen to his music, people like his music, and more important than that, if you just look at his body of work, what he actually did do, not what he was rapping about, what he did do. He volunteered, he gave back, and he supported local businesses. If the sign is approved during today's city council meeting, the sign would be unveiled next week, December 15th at 1 o'clock. He is definitely worth that honor. Jalen, thank you. Well, the family of young Dolph is also planning a public memorial service for the next day at FedEx Forum. Young Dolph's longtime girlfriend, though, Mia J, is speaking out for the first time since the Memphis rapper's death. In a video posted on social media, she calls on parents to step up when it comes to keeping your kids safe from street violence. As a parent and having a child, I want my kids to understand, like, choosing friends, selecting who rides with you, like, who you who you hanging out with, who you, who you up there gang gang with, all of that. Like, you got to be very wise. Well, she is also asking people to keep her and her family in your prayers. So far, though, no one has been arrested for young Dolph's death, which happened again almost three weeks ago. But it was a targeted murder. J.B. Smiley Jr. announced plans to run for governor. He spoke about community policing, violent crime prevention programs, and vocational training for high school students. The 34-year-old also spoke about the state's coronavirus response and says he supports vaccination efforts and saying everyone should have reliable access to health care, especially now. But he ended his speech with a call to action. From my hometown of Memphis to Bristol, to Jackson to Burns, to all the surrounding counties and towns, I'm asking that we come together that we support each other, that we wrap each other around in love and move us to a better direction. There we go, you got it. <laughs> All right, okay. Rich. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We're gonna move the ladder, so I'm just gonna move on the other side. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, come on, First of all, I just want to thank everyone for coming out and um, doing it the right way. Showing one of our very own love. I think that's what matters. We have an opportunity to continue his legacy. You heard from Mia. She told you that continuing his legacy would be loving more doing more, and I'm going to add another one, giving more. Because every person who spoke today told you that Dolph gave freely. So I want to challenge each and every one of you today to give freely. 
But I'm not talking necessarily about your financial dollars. I'm talking about time. Your heart. Your love. Because that is what we will all remember. How much time you spend with one another. How much effort you put in investing in that person. And before we leave, I want Mia to come say a few more words. And then we're going to bid you adieu. everyone who came out today I want to thank our family I want to thank Rita for making sure that this got done in a, in a way that would really honor us right. in a community that he loves so much I want to thank Councilman JB Smiley and all of the councilmen that approved for this to be done and just everybody who was in support of Young Dolphin his legacy and continuing it I appreciate all of you guys my family does my children does and I just want to encourage y'all, like real talk, be more kind, give more, have a heart for the people. Because when we, when we change our heart and the conditions of our heart, we can stop a lot of violence. We can stop a lot of senseless killing. Right. We can allow people to just have life and more life abundantly with their families. Because that's something that I won't have the opportunity to be able to partake in. But each and every one of you, you do. And so I just want to challenge each and every one of you just to try to make a small difference. Tap into that spirit of dog so we can have a better community and a better environment for our children to live in. So thank you. January 28th, if you have a lawyer hired this fine, if not, I'm going to appoint an attorney for you. You can both step back in the back. Thank y'all for bringing this business to Johnson Court for me. I'm going to call the court to recess. Everyone can remain seated. Well, it's been at the recess. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in nine days. Thank y'all for being here today. Be safe. See you in nine days. Be careful. Sir. Step up. Okay. This is Paul Hagerman, H A G E R M A N, with the District Attorney's Office. Okay, so uh, we saw, but what, what exactly happened today? Uh, today we had the two defendants, uh, Mr. Johnson and Mr. Smith, in court for the first time on the uh, murder of Adolph Thornton, Young Dolph. Uh, it was set for arraignment. Both of the uh, defendants asked for more time to get attorneys hired. So we'll come back in about a week and a half uh, for that. You know, understanding that they don't have attorneys right now, how long can they actually sit in jail? Um, our judges, know. our judges here, try to get people attorneys fast. They don't, they don't want them just sitting in jail. Now, these defendants have a right to hire an attorney, you know, of their choosing. Sometimes it can take a defendant up to a month uh, to do that. 
uh, this judge wants to make sure these defendants have an attorney, you know, sooner rather than later. And so we're coming back in about a week and a half at the request of the defendants. They still have no bond, right? They still have no bond. Understanding um, that at this point in time, only two people have been arrested in regards to uh, young adults shooting. Do we know of any other arrests? Do we know we can move on right now? Just I can just, all I can say is the investigation goes on. Is Mr. Barnett, he was in Indiana in jail. He's charged as an accessory after the fact. Is he back in Memphis? Has he been extradited back? My understanding is he's still in Indianapolis. When is, it, when is he going to be extradited? Do y'all know? I don't know. Any I don't details? Know. Obviously, with this case, uh, we're in the very beginning stages, but in regards to how long this will this thing will go on in, in trial, oh, what, yeah. what are we looking at? We're at the beginning stages, the very beginning. This is literally, you know, their first, first uh, court date, so it's, you know, it's hard to answer that. This is a process, though, as y'all know. Y'all uh, covered these cases before. Uh, once they get attorneys, we'll start from there. We're in a courtroom that moves fast and expeditiously, and we'll just see where we're at uh, month by month. But I think, you know, Memphis wants some closure to this thing, and uh, the family, and we do too. But when a case like this, obviously high profile, there's so many rumors, so many people, you know, saying stuff, whatever. Does that make things more difficult on your office? I don't really pay attention much, like, to the rumors, and I don't have much social media or things like this. Uh, I know who the victim was, uh, familiar with him, knows, knows what he meant to Memphis and what he symbolized with regard to, you know, being a self-made person and the grit and grind of Memphis. and. Um, we need to get some justice in this case. Paul, you, you've been a very busy man. I'm, I'm talking about with the Lorenzo Wright case and now this on your hands. Um, it never gets easy coming in contact with these families, obviously. Well, I, dealing with the families is, uh, you know, you have to have hard conversations with them, but it's one of the best things about this job is getting to meet, getting to meet these families and, and talk with them. And, and they share with you, uh, you know, personal details and things about, you know, the victims. And uh, there's, there's some meaningful conversations and some meaningful meetings uh, with the family. So that's, that's not the hard part of the job. Have you had communication with uh, Dolph's family? I have. Yeah. yeah. Anything you can share or? They're very interested in the prosecution of this case. Uh, his mother's actually sick today, so she's not here. But some other family members uh, are here, and they're going to, uh, I look forward to meeting with all of them pretty soon. Obviously, um, great detective work and everything, but we talked about 500 tips in this case. Would we be at this point if it wasn't for the public's help? Uh, tips came in from the very start. These detectives worked nonstop. They literally didn't sleep for at least a week or so uh, once this thing, once this thing happened. I think as far as uh, what has led to the charges and the investigation and things like that. You just have to stay tuned to uh, various court days and things like that. So you're still not releasing a motive or anything? At this point, I'm, I wouldn't be allowed to comment on stuff like that. Understanding the eyes are on Memphis right now, in, in, in the music world, all around the world, um, just understanding getting this thing right. Are we, are we at the point where, again, we can go to trial, even though the trial hasn't been set, but we can go knowing that these two were from the DA's office, you all have strong evidence against them. We wouldn't be here without strong evidence against them. We're confident and... Uh, you all saw the video from November 17th when the two people shot and murdered Dolph. We got the two people in court today. And more arrests could still come? Investigation ongoing. Can we say who was wearing that Bass Pro hat? I couldn't comment on details like that. Since they've been here, have they have they complained about their incarceration here or anything they have to say being in jail? I haven't heard from uh, either one of them. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you all. But I tell y'all what y'all stop listening to these people. Just wait and see what the DA tell y'all. Okay? Wait and see what the DA come and tell y'all. Uh, y'all saw the video from November 17th when the two people shot and murdered Dolph. We got the two people. Please, y'all. Just, just wait to see what the DA tell y'all. Y'all saw the video from November 17th. They gotta, they gotta solve this case, y'all. 
Because the elections is coming up. The Atlanta Police Department just released to WREG detailing a scandal involving Memphis Police Department's incoming chief, Sarah Lynn Davis. The documents show in the early 2000s, an Atlanta police officer working a second job at a photo processing plant found graphic pictures of young girls with a man who happened to be an Atlanta police sergeant's husband. He says he turned over those photos, but no action was taken until 2007 when APD finally told the FBI, turning over 50 sexually explicit photos showing 12 to 15 year old girls the husband paid. An internal investigation was launched to find out who knew what and when. Two detectives claim they told Davis, the unit commander at the time, about the photos. But she told them to cut it, to stop investigating, while making a hand gesture in front of her neck. Davis was also interviewed, but claims she only became aware of the photos in 2007. Due to inconsistencies in their testimony, the sheriff's office used a computer voice stress analyzer, which indicated deception in Davis's voice, not the detectives who accused her of knowing about the photos much earlier. Internal investigators wrote, Davis employed a countermeasure technique which involved clenching her teeth in an attempt to alter her measurable vocal output during the examination. They had others evaluate it blindly, and they agreed she showed deception. Davis was fired. In a press conference in Memphis last month, she stressed she was used as a scapegoat. I refused to take the blame for something I had nothing to do with. And I decided to fight the, um, the case because I knew if I fought that case that the truth would come out. Davis appealed her termination to the city's civil service board and won. The board wrote, Davis provided convincing testimony about a meticulous setup of the unit she supervised. One of the investigators actually admitted during the hearing that I never told them not to investigate this particular case. Memphis Mayor Jim Strickland says he reviewed what happened in Atlanta and he felt comfortable with his decision to appoint Davis. That was a bogus charge. That was a bogus charge. That was a bogus charge. Good evening, everyone. So this afternoon, I'm going to take my mask off here. This afternoon, the Memphis Police Department responded to a person shot at 2370 Airways Boulevard. Our preliminary investigation reveals the victim is Adolph Robert Thornton Jr. This shooting is another example of the senseless gun violence that we have seen far too often locally and nationwide. Too many families, too many mothers, too many fathers have suffered in our city. And quite frankly, I think we are all tired of it. Our hearts go out to the Thornton family and all who are affected by this horrific act of violence. Tonight, we strongly encourage everyone to stay home if you do not have to be out. We also strongly encourage everyone to remain calm as we actively perform our investigation. The Memphis Police Department is providing an increased presence in areas of the city that might be directly impacted by this unfortunate incident. We are committed to working with the community to stop these senseless murders. We're also dedicated to bringing those responsible for today's shooting and others to justice. We encourage anyone who has any information about this incident to call Crime Stoppers at 901-528-2274. Let me say that again, 901-528-2274. And now I'll take a few questions. What happened? yesterday was a targeted murder. Because it's targeted, what you need is intervention into the two groups that have problems with each other. Well, we're taking all of these um, requests into consideration and we're continuing to communicate with our city officials and evaluate the, situ the situation so that we can make the best decision. And it doesn't mean that we won't have a curfew at some point in time, but right now, we think that um, the deployment of our officers in the specific areas that are impacted the most will be enough presence for tonight. And as I said before, we are encouraging everyone to stay in if they don't have to be out. Is there any video footage? Uh, we don't know for sure just yet. Is there any video footage? 
Uh, we don't know for sure just yet. Is there any video footage? Uh, we don't know for sure just yet. Is there any video footage? Uh, we don't know for sure just yet. Paper Route Empire. Can you tell That's us? Mine. Oh, That's mine. mine. That's mine. About being a CEO. That's mine. Oh, mine. That's about Paper Route Empire. Can you tell us? That's mine. Oh, mine. That's about being a CEO. That's mine. Oh, mine. That's about being a CEO. Paper Route Empire. Can you tell us? That's mine. Oh, mine. That's about being a CEO. That's mine. Oh, mine. That's about being a CEO. That's mine. Paper Route Empire. That's mine. Oh my. That's about being a CEO. That's about being a CEO. That's about being a CEO. Oh my. Oh my. Kato 2 x from Double R posted a photo on social media of a Draco with the caption underneath that read, Don't never make a song about me. Come get this Drake back in blood. Now, in the death of another teenager last summer, Kavion Hobson had just graduated high school when he was killed in Orange Mound back in July. WMC Action News 5's Jerry Askin breaks down the charges filed in his death and the reaction from Hobson's family. For the family of 17-year-old Kavion Hopkins, it's tough. He's my grandson. You, you know. Jesse Patton was more relieved Friday when he learned one of his grandson's alleged killers is now being charged as an adult. Police say 16-year-old Kevin Young was arrested back in July and is now facing adult charges of first-degree murder. I'll let justice take its course. Police say 17-year-old Kavion Hopkins was killed here in the Orange Mound area back in July. Now we're finding out at least one of his teen murder suspects is being tried as an adult. The other teen suspect, who police say is Marshawn Brakefield, is also facing first-degree murder charges. But My cousin is also Makita's brother. Yeah, yeah. I bet nobody knows that, right? But that is the truth. My cousin is also Makita's brother. Yeah, yeah. I bet nobody knows that, right? But that is the truth. My cousin is also Makita's brother. Yeah, yeah. I bet nobody knows that, right? But that is the truth. Key Glock. Key Glock. Yeah, and my, and my big brother, too. And my big brother. I fuck with him. Like before rap type shit. Hmm. Like he didn't watch me grow up, I didn't watch him become the nigga he become today. Yeah. Like when he came when he ain't had shit. Like when that was sharing clothes and shit. And my brother know sharing clothes. But yeah, and my big brother. Nah, I could tell that he fucks with you too, man, because you know he doesn't really fuck with too many people <laughs> on the songs. Yeah, that nigga. He, he definitely blessed you and even put it on his YouTube channel, which yeah. And what about Key Glock? Key Glock, yeah, and my, and my big brother too. What was he saying in the video? Double R, right? Yeah, double R. Y'all done already said that uh, Young Doc Von Saul done already added him uh, as a co-founder of Double R, allegedly. Let me put that out there since y'all saying I'm implicating people. He done already exposed him. I didn't expose uh, uh, Kato two times and shit. You really need a publicist. You really need to shut the fuck up. They going off your ass. Non talking motherfucker on this. If I find out that they leak, leak, leak is from some, like, sometimes you gotta know when to shut the fuck up. It's your fucked up burbage. They really got a lot of this shit going on. Other than they leak or exposed, words like that make motherfuckers look guilty. That means that Young Dolph has his own day of service on November 17th, just like Martin Luther King has his own day of service on January 17th.